Hi, my name is Sharon Chen, and I'm a pediatric infectious disease physician at Stanford University. In this video, I'll discuss the main complication of acute watery diarrhea, dehydration, and how to treat it. I'll also discuss its global implications. Our learning objectives are to explain the epidemiological differences in the etiology of infectious diarrhea seen in the developing versus developed world and to recognize the clinical features, complications, and treatment of dehydration from acute infectious watery diarrhea. Watery diarrhea is caused by various pathogens, viruses, bacteria, and protozoa. The disease occurs in the small intestine and results in a large loss of fluid and electrolytes. Thus, the main complication is dehydration with electrolyte abnormalities. Treatment is rehydration. Diarrheal illnesses are transmitted through fecal-oral contamination. In developing countries, the main source of infection is contaminated water because of poor infrastructure. For example, many places lack sewage systems and people are in close contact with open sewers like the one in the picture. Sewers can also contaminate drinking water sources. As you might imagine, bacterial pathogens in these sewers come from humans and then can transmit to other humans. Worldwide, nearly 1.7 billion cases of diarrhea occur each year, and diarrheal illness has a huge impact on children, especially in developing countries. Diarrheal illness and dehydration continue to be a leading cause of death in children worldwide. Frequent bouts of diarrhea is a leading cause of malnutrition in children. In contrast to developing countries, contaminated water from human feces is not the problem in developed countries because they have sewage systems. In the U.S., the problem stems from food sources that are contaminated by animal feces, and we have a lot of animal feces. Animal feeding operations like the one in the picture produce more than one ton of animal feces per person per year. So essentially, a person becomes infected with bacteria that typically live in the gastrointestinal tract of animals. These infections occur more often than you think. One out of six Americans are sick with a foodborne illness each year. Generally, death is infrequent, but many people are hospitalized. I have focused on bacteria, but viruses like rotavirus and norovirus are also very important causes of diarrheal illness worldwide. These viruses are transmitted through direct contact. Now that you have a sense of the diarrheal illness burden in the world, let's discuss what you would do if you had to take care of someone with watery diarrhea. Remember, I said the main complication is dehydration. So the first step is to understand the degree of dehydration, which will give you a sense of how sick your patient is. In addition, it's important to consider other problems such as immune suppression or malnutrition. I'm going to describe to you two cases to illustrate degrees of dehydration. The first patient lives in a developed country and presents with acute watery diarrhea from rotavirus. She's an eight-month-old girl in daycare where transmission from one child to another is very common. She has had two days of fever and vomiting. You should be concerned about her dehydration because of her vomiting. Here's some clues to look for. She is very thirsty and trying to drink. That's a good sign. Her parents note that she is having less wet diapers than normal. That's a bad sign because urine output is one of the first things to decline in dehydration. When she cries, you don't see any tears. That's a bad sign because it's another sign that her body is trying to conserve water. The second case is from a developing country similar to the one in our springboard video. This child develops a very severe watery diarrhea from cholera. He has gone beyond being very thirsty and actively drinking. Now he's lethargic. He doesn't look at you when you examine him. He doesn't even cry. He has stopped urinating to conserve water. On exam, his eyes look sunken. His mouth is dry. When you pinch his skin, it has lost its elasticity or turgor and remains raised. His vital signs are also worrisome. He has tachycardia and tachypnea. This should also make your heart rate go up. The drawing on the right illustrates some of these features. So how dehydrated are these two patients? You can use these guidelines from the World Health Organization for help. Our first patient had moderate dehydration. She was thirsty, a bit irritable, had decreased urine output and lack of tears. If we weighed her before and after the illness, we might have seen a three to 10% loss, which is pretty significant. Our second child with cholera had severe dehydration. This typically reflects a 10% or more loss of body weight. It is a medical emergency because of possible shock and even death. 
So how do you treat these patients? Treatment is rehydration. It involves a resuscitation stage to restore normal perfusion, a replacement phase to restore the deficit fluid loss, and a maintenance phase to keep up with the ongoing losses. A couple of important points. From mild to moderate dehydration, we can safely and effectively use oral rehydration therapy, or ORT. ORT does not stop the diarrhea, <clears throat> but it allows the body to absorb fluids in the face of ongoing disease. It works by combining a mixture of sugar and salt and equimolar ratio. This needs to be the correct ratio. Otherwise, you might cause osmotic diarrhea from making a hyperosmolar solution. The sugar is added to take advantage of the sodium glucose co-transporter in the brush border membrane of enterocytes. Both glucose and sodium will then enter into the cells. Water will follow the absorbed sodium and rehydrate your patient. Please note that most other solutions like sports drinks, sodas, and juices are not adequate for rehydration. These drinks generally have too little sodium and too much sugar to take advantage of the sodium glucose co-transporter. In addition, the osmotic effect of the excess carbohydrate may result in additional fluid loss. In addition to ORT, it's important to continue feeding your patients so that they don't lose too many calories or become completely malnourished and so that they heal faster. If your patient has severe dehydration, this is a medical emergency. It will require intravenous or sometimes even intraosseous fluids for resuscitation. When the level of consciousness improves, you can transition to ORT.